Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the broadcast here at the Starletter I-League Star Series American Qualifiers. As we continue to on back. to our next best of two, our middle best of two matchup, we have Complexity Gaming pick. going up against doo here in this two-game series. So really looking forward to this one. Hopefully you guys are as well. I'm excited. I'm Breaky CPK, and I'm joined by my co-caster once again. I'm joined by the one, the only mini. How's it going, man? Do I have you Ten muted still? Seconds remaining. No. Are you there, Minnie? Five is remaining. Say something. <laughs> Say something. So <laughs> Hold on, guys. I think he has me muted. Let me see if I can get his attention. You there? <laughs> can you not hear me? <sighs> Ten seconds Classic. remaining. Test, test. No, you should be able to hear me. Five seconds remaining. You have me muted, I think. Hello. Complexities, turn to pick. He should be able to hear this. Dire team pick. Let me just recall him. We see a draft going on. Let me get my co-caster back here. Before we actually get on with the cast here. Hey, you there? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. I don't know Ten what was happening before, but... Remaining. I don't know. Weird. Most no, Skype was bugging out for something, but... Yeah, I can hear you now. It's all good. Five all seconds right. remaining. Guys, we Gucci. We Gucci. All right. Good to go. Yeah, I, I could hear you doing stuff, and I was like, he's ignoring me. What an yeah, asshole. like, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> ignoring me. Uh, no, but... Uh, all right. Happy to have you back, though. And again, here we are in our next series now. Complexity versus Doo-Wop here. This should be a fun one. I'm, I'm excited. You know, I, I I haven't made it a secret personally. I'm a fan of, of complexity especially and looking to, to see the, them succeed. But uh, Doo-Wop has also proven to be a pretty good team as of late. So this should be a good series here. Yeah, definitely. Like, and I think with uh, the draft already, it's going to be definitely rather interesting. Another game where we're going to see a pudge in this series. Yeah, let's talk about that real quickly, because Rubik in a Pudge. Now, uh, for those that may have missed uh, the match yesterday of Complexity versus DC, they actually ran Pudge in that match. And, uh, you know, I was bringing it up in the draft that Monkeys actually was talking to me late recently that uh, he loves to play Pudge. He loves to play Pudge, especially even in the off lane, and he considers remaining. himself to play it pretty well. Uh, we saw yesterday an example of that. He plays it pretty damn well. He was Dying landing hook after hook back. against DC and, and helped them get to victory in that second game there. So uh, I'm expecting it to be a monkey's pudge, but it could also be a Z-Freak pudge. That isn't out of the question. Yeah, definitely. But I, I do like the uh, kind of innovation, what we're seeing teams um, play pudge. Though. Ten like, seconds obviously, we, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the, the laning mechanics and, and how obviously you can hook creeps and things Five like that. Five seconds but remaining. The things what I'm seeing a lot, actually, is I'm seeing a lot of pudges play against Underlord. Um, because obviously when the Reserve Dark Rift happens from Underlord, obviously with the Pudge, you can hook one out and you can kind of guarantee that person is not going to get into the Dark Rift and therefore you can guarantee that, that kill is going to happen. So there is kind of a, a lot of kind of innovations. Now we're seeing Underlord more sort of regularly in the meta. We're seeing bang. heroes that are trying to ways sort of deal with him and encounter him. And I think Pudge is definitely one way um, to do that. So I'm looking Dire for uh, perhaps a clutch hook out of uh, Reality Rifts or uh, Dark Rifts would be quite interesting to see. That is, uh, that's the plan for complexity, at least. But they're facing against already a solid lineup of doo as mentioned. You even talked about the Underlord. They throw a Weaver on top of that. Weaver's kind of really stepped up Ten as one of the more go-to cores, I feel like, uh, for a lot of teams. And uh, doo no different Five here, so it makes sense remaining. to you. Yeah, definitely. Like it's a, a definitely a strong core, but we might even see him as a, as a support as well. A lot of teams have been running as a support. I mean, I know VP originally played it, but they only play it with a Dro. But we've seen Weavers now being played without a Dro, still as a support. And um, obviously, we've got like um, Rubik, obviously, which is decent against Weaver. Obviously, the instant uh, lockdown with like, Telekinesis, obviously, and Sakuchi's a great spell to still. Uh, and talking of the Rubik, I do kind of like this one-two opening from Complexity, though. Like Pudge, obviously, a, a good hero we talked about against Underlord, but Rubik is a, normally a hero that is picked against Pudge because of that instant um, meat hook that you can take if you steal it, which is just completely like, one of the scariest things. Very Rubik with, with hook is very, very scary. So I like the one-two from, from the Complexity pick. then. They follow up with Avenge as well, so sort of packing in the stuns, which I think is definitely needed against the Weaver. If you don't have the right lockdown against him, if, when, if Weaver's played as a carry and as a call without a lot Lockdown is a, a complete nuisance mm -hmm. in the mid game. Yeah, Vengeful can assist with remaining. that ideally. Now, the Lincoln Sphere, as mentioned, obviously it can be a little bit of an issue, but uh, definitely kind of focusing remaining. on that, it feels like from complexity now. 
Vengeful is kind of another interesting hero, though, too, for sure, because, you know, obviously, time. for me, whenever I think Vengeful, I always thought for the longest time, you know, coming from Haunted, it's, we see him as a support hero, yet in Dota 2, I know, and there's teams that even are known for doing it, a core Vengeful is mm -hmm. not out of the question here. So I'm kind of curious yeah. what complexity is going to decide to do with that Vengeful spirit. Exactly. I think it all depends on, on, on how the draft goes, because at the moment, Venge and Rubik can be played as supports, and as you mentioned, obviously, Monkeys could play Pudge as a core, but we'll have to wait and see. Like I know EG have been playing a lot of Avengeral, um, Carry, even, obviously, uh, Team MP used to do it quite a lot with Aoi, but um, we'll, we'll have to sort of see how, how it works. So it's okay against Underlord, obviously, as a core, um, because obviously you can get the Wave of Terror Five and the Stun, which is obviously remaining. a lot of threatens, uh, threatening in the lane, but... Do I pick up the SF though? So SF plus Weaver, so a lot of minus armor already picked up. Um, and obviously, so they're going to have a lot of easy Roche potentials. And perhaps Complexity are going to look to try and do something about a lot of this negative armor. But with, with kind of their both supports, or arguably both their supports, are going to pick it up. There's no chance for like a Dazzle, but perhaps a, a Sven, perhaps, perhaps, would, uh, would definitely be in order. Because SF and Weaver is going to be dishing out a lot of negative armor and a lot of physical presence mm -hmm. itself. Well, we'll see what that fourth pick ends up being here for complexity, but uh, yeah, Sven wouldn't be out of the question, I feel like. And now OD is going to be a mid option here. Dire team as pick. Cancel, most likely, of course, going to be playing that for them. They like the matchup against Shadow Fiend. Does he match up well, you think? Yeah, definitely. And I think the, uh, the a main reason why they picked up OD as well is it's a guaranteed hook as well. You sort of hook, or so you imprison into a hook, kind of a similar Ten to an SD remaining. into Morana Arrow, a lot of setup um, for these hard to hit um, Five seconds you know, skill remaining. shots per se. So if this Pudge is going to be played as a, a roaming four, then obviously you'll expect a lot Reserve of ganks this SF mid, which is a, a very easy hero to kill, obviously very immobile and very susceptible to these uh, roaming ganks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fourth pick ends up being for Duop, meanwhile. Again, it depends where their Weaver's going to end up. But right now, it looks like they really have their three cores picked up. But as mm. you're mentioning, Weaver, obviously, support could be an option here. So maybe Duop also even thinking along those lines. But uh, they have about 30 seconds of reserve time and uh, waiting to decide what they want to get. So perhaps going to get that information here. I think I figure it's going to be some kind of support. Yeah, it is going to be undying here. Complexity yeah, I really like this pick up here actually because if you look on Complexity side, they've sort of shown Rubik, Pudge, Venge, like that could t technically be kind of the you know, the safe lane in itself, and Underlord is not going to be able to contest that lane at all. However, there's one hero like like most dual lanes are going to lose to a tri lane, um, but in this case, I think actually Undying Underlord can probably actually beat um, the tri lane coming out from Complexity because obviously the more heroes that are in a lane, then obviously the more heroes or more chance for like a multiple. Targeted decays that can really pump up and dying sort of damage and presence in the lane. So really nice pickup here, and I think um, Complexity should be a little bit worried because Underlord Undying lane is very very scary, and I'm looking to sort of see how Complexity are going to deal with this in the draft. Yeah, Undying definitely that Dying potential to kind of dive back. towers as well and playing exactly. those aggressive lanes. So yeah, that's uh, Complexity. Oh. I'm sure kind of thinking about that now too. They, they banned Beastmaster actually with their back. final ban. As uh, Juggernaut's taken away by Duop right, right here. So now Duop, uh, again, perhaps going to get that ultimate information now as far as uh, whatever their final pick is, where that Weaver is going to end up. It's not often we see a final pick support option, but. Ten seconds um, remaining. Definitely possibility. Like they, they're definitely lacking on lockdown right now, really. like if They don't Five actually have a, a set stun. Like their only kind of lockdown is Pit of Malice, but in itself, it isn't a stun at all. So. Um, Reserve like time. things like the channeling Pudge ulti is gonna get off without anything to really stop it. So they're definitely gonna need some kind of lockdown uh, for their final pick. Ten seconds remaining. There's huh. some kind of lockdown, I guess. Complexities. Yeah. That accomplishes pick. that. Oh, and they go the clinks. This is, you know, God, I want to pull up the draft from yesterday because this is actually pretty similar from what I remember. Um, complexity versus Duop. They had a Clinks, Pudge, Rubik, Leshrac, and Shadow Fiend. So Rubik, Clinks, and Pudge are the same. It's OD and Vengeful are they kind of a little bit different right there, but yeah, very similar at the same time. It, although somewhat unique, you know, Clinks and even Pudge not necessarily the most popular heroes for a lot of teams. So yeah. it's be fun. I do like the, the final Clinks pick up here. I talked about how obviously how Undol and is a very very strong lane, and a hero like Clinks is, is great in the lane. Obviously, it's ranged. Um, so I shouldn't be able to be getting too many decay stacks off, and obviously Underlord's Atria Fear Aura shouldn't be causing a lot of problems for Clinks. But they needed a strong safe lane, and I think Clinks definitely allows that. Obviously, the Strafe is great as well to deal with uh, killing the Tombstone remaining. very quickly as well with the, the high attack speed. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, a decent final pick. Five obviously, you can easily start to kill the Crystal Maiden whenever she's um, by her lonesome. So. Mm -hmm. 
Here we go. We got game number one of this series now. Complexity versus doo-wop here. As we got to kick things off with a pause. So hopefully uh, not too long here, but again, excited for this one. Uh, for those that uh, complain about sound options, guys, I, I don't. It's literally the same options that it was the the first series. So uh, I'll I'll monitor it, I guess. But it should be uh, it should be overall good. It sounds like on my end that the things are good, but uh, yeah, sound good to me. But yeah. Anyways, if uh, if somebody that I know wants to message me suggesting that the sound is having issues, then I may uh, look to kind of tweak some things if I can. But hopefully things are good and uh, we can all move on with our lives here. Um, all right, so. Coming out of the pause, though, this should be a fun one, though, with complexity, especially, like I said, you know, going with somewhat unique pick, the Clinks, as mentioned, also playing that yesterday right here uh, in the hands of Moo as well, and, you know, played it very well, but really Monkeys on that pudge, like I was talking about, really kind of controlled that game, landed some pretty big hooks throughout and uh, constantly getting pick after pick. So we'll see how he uh, does this time around against the doo -wop now, but undying early on. Going to get that smoke up and block the Ancients with the Sentry. And possibly run into them. Oh, Z Freak. Okay, yeah. Gonna see him right there. And gonna pick up that maybe something was placed. Yeah, really nice, interesting block, actually. Like, some people think, like, why are they blocking the engines? There's no way, like, there's not, there's not a Sven. There's, there's no need to sort of stack. But obviously, when you're playing against a Rubik, particularly on the Radiant side, obviously, this uh, ancient pool that's been kind of the, the flavor of the, the more weak, actually, the, let alone the month, um, is obviously gonna stop. Um, uh, you know, Rubik pulling the ancient creeps into mid lane and, and helping cancel on the OD quite a lot. So this this little sentry is gonna is gonna stop that from happening. So yeah, nice play from Fury there. Realizing what's up. They're gonna want to try to steal this bounty rune up here. We'll see if Complexity allows them to or not. But as you mentioned, this observer ward being here, so Complexity monkeys actually is gonna have to start running back. Doesn't have any ability just yet. So we'll see what uh, he ends up getting. I believe he got hook yesterday. And did some of that uh, uh, pulling into the jungle. Uh, this is really good play actually from Duop actually. It looks in the, uh, they're just gonna give up this bounty run actually with OD coming in. Most likely. Yeah. yeah but um yeah, they placed another so they play block the ancients over here. But they've also blocked this medium camp as well, so it's gonna stop Pudge from being able excuse me, being able to sort of hook that over I'll and help him in it. the uh, the off plane here. So uh, Matt and Duop are, seem to know they have done the homework without a doubt because mm -hmm. they've blocked Ancients here, they've blocked this, so they're making sure that there's no way that the you know, complexity can get ahead just from these kind of uh, gimmicky, uh, quote unquote, kind of lane mechanics. Yeah, again, literally the same thing yesterday happened. DC did the same thing. They blocked the camp and, you know, still Monkeys was able to eventually get level two and then, you know, start the roam thing. So, again, we'll kind of keep an eye on that and see how the transitions take place here throughout this game. Uh, cancel middle lane. Jeez, he's taking a lot of damage off the bat on the OD. So thanks to the Undying right here. Of course, that Decay. Great harassment tool. Already has the eight charges of it. So, Cancel having to feel the pain from that. But, uh, Overall, staying alive at least, and it's going to be interesting to see, you know, in the Trubu 1v1, you figure it would probably do decent, but now with the Undying thrown in here, kind of causes some issues for uh, for OD, so. I wonder if we're going to see any rotations from Complexity to help with that. It's hard because like, no one can really rotate. Like, if Venge rotates by himself, like, there's no way that he can kind of box out the Undying, so, uh, th and then obviously if, if they rotate the Rubik as well, like, then it's kind of committing two supports just to deal with the Undying. It's kind of very difficult, but he's getting dive right here, but I mean, he should be fine. He's got a self Radiance up. Middle tower fine, but there's TP from Rubik now. There we go. Can he get the lift off in time? Lift, he can. There we go. The follow-up imprisonment. Not at ready just yet. Actually, for another five seconds. And Biryu is actually going to just walk away, and he'll be fine, so. Nice support, um, yeah, So we talked about, obviously, this camp being blocked as well as the, the medium camp, but this one over here was uh, was left unchecked, and Rubik Z3 was able to get the lift into the tier 2, and, and that's why he was able to get level 2 uh, a very timely manner, but wasn't enough to kill the Undying mid, but he's going to go ahead and take this bounty run over here. Yeah. He should be close to level 3. Yeah, Rune control coming out. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pudge is him all the way back at the lane as it spawns once again. He has level two here. Two and a half, really. But uh, again, still having blocked. He doesn't have any sentry on him or anything, so Double that will damage. remain blocked. He'll get the bounty rune at least. And a little bit of extra farm coming from that bottom lane. Yeah. the Lord. Could be in some trouble. He has that TP. Can they get the magic missile off in time? Yes, they can. Snaking. He's a dead king right here. Most likely. Z Freak, yeah, there's a lift, and who gets the last hit? It will be Melons, the greedy man he is. No, but uh, well played right there by Complexity to successfully get that kill. Yeah, 
nice, just nice rotation. And again, the, having these kind of like Rubik level three now, it makes a big difference, honestly, in these kind of early engagements. And, and so getting these pulls and, and getting these blocks is very important. But it looks like Seafrig is going to try and de ward perhaps this camp. Yeah, and he's going to get it as well. So that's going to be open and then for them for the minute three as well. So this is going to help definitely Monkeys out in the top lane. So he's able to pull this and get level three. Yeah, well yeah. played right there. As Monkey's lining up for it and uh, gonna accomplish this match and get that level three. So I'm gonna actually watch how he does this right here. Yeah, don't fail. Aye. Oh, it's like he's done it before. Well and then he's gonna pull. He's gonna pull this side as well. So he'll probably get um, close to even perhaps level four and deny this whole wave. Um, so yeah, it's a nice D ward coming out from Z Freak there. Oh, let me put those last hits into nice up. I apologize there. We got OD at 10 and 6 here in the middle lane against a Shadow Fiend at 16 and 3. But again, you have to keep in mind, in fact, he's in trouble right here, taking a lot of damage. The rip coming out, but not enough in the end. So once again, Cancel will survive. But that goes to my point that Undying has been middle here for quite a bit, really supporting the Shadow Fiend. So understandable that Shadow Fiend's dominating. I think I'm actually surprised how well Cancel's done, actually, seeing so as he was against his Undying um, 1v1 practically the whole time. So really nice play, actually, from. From Cancel to only be like about five or six uh, CS behind um, the OD. Uh, we do see actually the, the Weaver and the Crystal Maiden coming over to get the wave that Pudge has pulled, but this allows Pudge also to get a, a three lane by himself actually. So, regardless of, of what they do, they, Pudge is going to get something out of it because of that pull. Just level four now. There we go. He's going to take some pressure right here. Yeah. He can, he can TP out though, off the Frostbite. He can TP straight out. But True. He could just run. Well, oh, I don't know if he's going to get away from this. Yeah. That bug's on him, so he's not he's really dead. escaping. He is definitely, definitely dead. <laughs> <laughs> attack, and that's a free I'll kill right there. The Killer should have been mid lane, though, so he got some kind of trade out of it. But, yeah, I think, actually, if Pudge was able to kind of bait out the Frostbite, like, earlier, uh, and then he could TP straight away, but the problem was that he, like, he was kept running, and the chip damage kept on going and going, and obviously got lower and lower, and that... And that whenever he was for a spot, he wouldn't get time to, to get TP out anyway, so unfortunate, but let's die. Middle lane, setting up an imprisonment right here. He's diving that Shadow Fiend. They do have support nearby. Pudge lining up the hook. Easy hook on top, and that's a dead 747 as a result. Four coming in, but obviously not getting here nearly in time from Crystal Maiden. In fact, she just cancels it as the job is already done. So that, that's the easy setup from, for Pudge right there with that imprisonment, and obviously a key target to get it on be in the Shadow Fiend. Now they're going to rotate uh, elsewhere, it seems like, perhaps the bottom lane. Let me try to push in the bottom lane down here as all four of them making the way down here. Let's see if they can. Underlord going to do his best to hold them off, but uh, I don't know if they're going to really be able to defend this if they choose to, so. Yeah, they're going to have to rotate the Weaver down as well, which they definitely can, actually. He just picked up a TP, so he's maybe perhaps looking for it, but Seafrig is going to push top, actually, and, or at least defend the pressure from Weaver, but... Um, Interesting arm build here from Moo, he's picked up the, the triple Sage's Mask, so we're going to see an Orchid picked up from him in the red show, obviously Bud gone. It makes sense, it's good against particularly the Weaver this game. Normally we see maybe like an early Desolator, or actually um, when I think EG picked up, they actually Radiant's had a, uh, have a Domino, so attack. he's able to sort of always get the death packed off, which is something that we might even still see actually. Um, but for now he's going to be building towards the Orchid. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what he went through, went for yesterday. Uh, God, it was the Orchid, but I think, did he end up going to Medallion? I know that could potentially be a decent item on him. Yeah, definitely as was well. I, I didn't know see if that, that game, was yesterday. So. Yeah, I, I don't think he did, but I know so. that is potentially an item that we could see. Blinking on exactly what he went for. But yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. Monkeys has taken over the middle lane for the time being, soaking up some experience and getting a little bit of farm here at least while Cancel's currently back at base. Getting some regen. It's going to be Tor T being back in. Ready to farm once again. It looks like... Uh, Flexity has to call for a little bit of a pause right here, the good old strat pause in the early game. Yeah, you see all the circles being drawn. <laughs> it's almost as if they're talking about what they want to do. <laughs> and move down here. Yeah, he, yeah he, he, did, he did this yesterday too, now I'm looking at it. He got the three Sages mask early on. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of benefit really. Like, Obviously, you're using a lot of mana just from like Searing Arrows and the Death Pack, things like that. He doesn't obviously have his soul ring, which is normally a, a common pickup for clinks, but um, without the soul ring, he's gonna use loads of uh, Sage's Master to get his mana regeneration up to speed. Top lane up here, yeah, Rubik needs to be careful. Undying in CM, rotating in. He is going to 
and just launch out a fade bolt Radiant and just keep his distance and see if he can nail something up. Meanwhile, Pudge runs right into them. He was not aware. Mel's going to run in as well. Magic Missile going to be used on Crystal Maiden. They pop the shrine. Radiant Monkey's going to stay alive. He missed the hook right there on a Crystal Maiden, though. That would have probably guaranteed the kill. They still might get it, but Monkey's just simply trying to live at this point. He denies himself at the last second, and they will not get Crystal Maiden as a result, actually. And now Z Freak, he needs to make his way out of here some way, somehow. I don't know if that's going to happen, though. As they slow him down, they Radiant's get the tower kill. Z Freak pretty much going to die right here. It's just a matter of how long it takes to kill him. And there you go. There's your answer. The decay comes out and they secure the kill on Tim. So, yeah, missing yeah. that hook, really unfortunate for monkeys. I think that's the whole kind of ethos of, of a Pudge as well. Like, you have to be hitting those hooks or it's it's not worth it. He's going to catch up here with the Undying, but he's not going to be able to kill him because he's by himself. But, yeah, that, that symbol hit, hooks like that can make a big difference. But they do uh, run mid. Again, OD is such a great hero to gank with, though, because obviously you set up with the Astro Imprisonment and then just a plus one rotates over. And SF, we talked about his kind of vulnerabilities as a mid laner. And uh, Complex are definitely kind of exploiting that, as we see with all these ganks. Bottom lane, snaking. He's gonna push it back with the Firestorm right here. Again, no move. He's obviously having a great time. The top last hit and denies in the game, 54 and seven. Take a look at that net worth, 3,600 net worth. You have 3,800 on uh, Weaver, who is leading the way. But uh, Klinks is definitely catching up. Speaking of Weaver, that Dragon Lance looks like it's coming up quickly for him. Yeah. Just around the corner. Yeah, Weaver is one of those heroes that's it's actually kind of quite unique in kind of um, design really because he's one of the only carry heroes that can kind of go the whole game without really buying boots because obviously there's Kuchi and we're going to sort of see it here um, it's saying that it's kind of again the kind of flavor of the month um, I think like Arteezy was doing quite a lot with kind of playing Weaver without boots but it obviously opens up a, a free item slot but also allows you to get uh, items like Dragon Lance a lot quicker and that's what we're going to see here rushing the Dragon Lance obviously without any boots and, um, yeah, and then probably make his way um, towards the Desolator straight after that as well. Yeah, mid push in the middle lane right now. OD gonna push it out with that imprisonment. It's just W Foe here Dyer's on the Crystal Maiden. Gonna spam it out, but of course Shadow Fiend nearby. And you see he has his bottle trying to finish those power treads. And Dyer's I think that's more fun with those races. Bottom fallen. tower though goes down in the meantime. As expected, Clinks. Again, leading the way there, Z Freak to assist. And so that Orchid is coming up pretty quickly, and the idea that he can uh, pick off several of these heroes here by himself is, is definitely a reality. Getting closer and closer right now, so Doo-Wop going to have to be looking out for that. Oh, do you, what do we, okay, it looks like he is going to be getting the Villa Discord. I was going to ask, you know, what should we expect to see on him? Yeah. What about after, you think? Well, I think Blink, or Blink, or at least um, the... Dragon Lance is, is really decent, but I think Cancel, if I remember correctly, like, really does favor the Blink. And it works, the Synergizer, so well with uh, Odie, obviously, because you can imprison this yourself, which him. lasts for four seconds, which always allows the, the Blink Dagger to be off cooldown, if you, even if you're getting hit. So it allows for a lot of sort of survivability and, and a lot of mobility as well. So probably Veil into Blink is uh, most likely what we're going to see here next. There is smoke coming up, though. Talking of Cancel, cast yeah. his curse, boys. Trying to get him, and there we go. That's it. As you mentioned, the cast just curse. I mean, when all five heroes essentially try to kill him now, we'll pop the imprisonment. There's support coming in, actually, so this could be interesting. Crystal made it with the ultimate. Will secure the kill, but she does fall. Monkey's going in the back. We got the hook. He sets up the kill on a die, but he's going to get taken out himself. However, Klinks is now here, but he's taking some good damage. Vengeful finally joins the party. Magic Missile not going to be too much. Dark Rift activated by Snake King. Looking to send himself and at least Shadow Fiend back. Weaver's trying to get there in time, and he will as they make their escape. So ultimately a two for three, I believe. Yeah, two for three exchange right there in favor of doo -wop. So they towed between uh, the two towers right there and it actually worked out for them. Yeah, I was already able to punish. Like, OG wasn't able to get anything off. I think the rotation was quite slow actually from complexity, but when it did come, I was able to sort of wipe up. The, the Rubik actually had um, max level Firestorm stolen actually, and CM was channeling her own, but so, like, was able to sort of, had to sort of stand in it and instantly just die just from that one spell from Rubik was stolen, but um, yeah, it's still a nice rotation from, from Duop. Let's see, he wasn't able to, to respond to. Well, could now though, about 600 gold away from, from Klinks. That's going to be a, a big playmaker, actually. And this Weaver, obviously, is, is building towards the Lincolns, but it's going to be quite far away from it. Ventral running into attack. Crystal Maiden right there. Radiance bottom boxed out though, but Melon's definitely setting up. Has the Radiant Nether Swap ready to go. As there's the fortification and Weaver. 
Suguchi again, again with that Dragon Lance, has that extra range. Radiant's bottom tower but all five being attack. here doesn't look like complexity wants to defend it actually. They're going to be split pushing instead. Dyer's They're pushing the middle lane as well attack. as that top tower with OD Dyer's being up here. Although he is playing it pretty passive. He's actually going to start Radiant's pulling back, not being able to see all of them. And that will be an easy fallen. tower kill coming out. Middle tower, though, we'll see if complexity can at least get this one. It really is just Moo doing damage to the tower. In the flank, though, Monkey has locked him down with the dismember. Is there enough follow up damage? Out comes the minus armor. And the damage from Moo being uh, coming out right here, it is going to be enough. It makes a strafe, but Crystal Man and the ulti got canceled immediately, actually. Not even sure by what the freezing build, however, they do get the kill on a Pudge, despite that, so. Yeah, yeah, nice TV out from, from Melons as well, actually. Radiant's we mentioned a little bit how, how Doom are very kind of lacking lockdown, so we're going to see a lot of sort of TPs out mid fight, and, and there's nothing like that Doom can really do about it. I mean, they, they completely dove really hard there, but was only, only lost the Pudge and eventually was able to TP out. Flank sitting from a distance. Yeah. Doesn't have the most life right here, but TPs are coming in. Down goes the Tombstone, but it's going to be killed pretty quickly as they do take out Undying as well. So the hold's successful for Complexity right there in the middle lane. That's nice rotation over. Again, you see how quickly that Undying Tombstone dies, though. And, and this is the reason why, one of the reasons why Clinks was picked up, that, that Strafe was able to destroy that Tombstone in seconds. And then Underlord becomes kind of very weak, um, particularly because obviously Underlord. Um, Really relies on that tombstone, although he is only level one, but still. Catches OD. Will he have any support with him? Doesn't have him prison, but Hook actually hitting on under Underlord right there. I think he might have got canceled to help him. Ends up hitting Underlord, dragging him in, and they do pick off OD in the back, and his Weaver chases him down. Ultra form activated by Undying, but Moon doing too much damage from a distance. Helps secure the kill into him with those searing arrows. And now you see Monkey's trying to live, has that rot. Can he maybe deny himself right here? Not going to be in time as he is chased down by the Weaver. Now Z Freak actually has to activate his own Shikuchi and that he's still right there to make sure he gets out of there. But another couple of back and forth battles, but another two for one exchange in favor of Duop actually. So they do come out on top of another fight also oh, slightly. He does have Orchid. I don't know if it's going to be enough damage, but he's going to definitely try for it. Straight back, yeah, three seconds. And he doesn't have Death Pack to be at. He's going to use it right there. Not going to happen. I don't know if he would have had the damage. It would have been definitely close, but Alas is able to skeech away. Yeah. But, and he's close. He's building his towards his Lincolns as well, which is definitely needed against the, the obviously awkward from from Clinks. And, and that's when when he gets when Weaver gets that Lincolns, it's going to be a complete nuisance. It's going in for the huh. cancel here, but cancel should be fine. Actually, it's going to be set up. Rubik is here as well. Yeah, he has even more support as Pudge also happens to be nearby, but how much are they going to commit is a question. Rubik wants to make a play. He's going to be hooked back, though. And in the end, nothing really coming from it. Top lane, who's doing some damage to Underlord up here? Orchid Bye. is on him, but yeah, there's no way he's killing Underlord. A little too tanky for him. Yeah, I, think, that back. I think Weaver, I think actually Orchid can only be ki almost killed on it on putting on the CM. Maybe the Underlord, uh, the Undying as well, sorry. Underlord and, sorry, Undying and CM is probably the only targets that Clinks can kill probably. Man, both, both Underlord, both <laughs> all Undying. All these Unders. Both, all these Unders, man, too much. Too much to handle. Shadow Fiend also happened to get a Dragonlance himself, but of course the Shadow Play gonna be next in line. So pretty traditional build as of late, as far as uh, what we usually see. Maybe even the Manta next, but. Keep an eye to see how he progresses, but uh, Odie has made his way to the bottom lane now, and yeah, we do see. Wait, Odie actually has a mechanism queued up right here, huh? Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess the Plexi really kind of value the the mech, the only mech here. And there's no really other kind of potential candidate that could really go for a mech, and Odie, I guess, he's got the, the the decent farm priority, but it's definitely peculiar though. Um, but he does have the mana to sustain it. Obviously, a lot of high mana pool plus obviously Radiant's the uh, max that is so Interesting. Oh, Radiant's middle yeah. tower has See fallen. the middle tower gets taken out. That was a, it's a pretty good sentry Shut ward right out. here. You know, getting a little bit of vision and able to see them uh, setting up the flank right there. So complexity is able to retreat in time. And there he head towards the top lane as a team. They're going to find a dying actually by himself. You see the wave of terror used initially. And for that damage, get the kill. Crystal Mage is also going to be thrown in. Two clinks right here. And he will also follow up with another kill. Oh, oh it hit Vengeful as she swapped first. Oh, well, the communication not necessarily on point, which uh, is pretty rare for complexity. Seems like they're usually on top of that, but sometimes you're not. All right, well, they'll push the top lane instead. They did get the two supports dead. 
Yeah, with Klingzor, so they should be able to set this down down pretty quickly. Like, race straight straight is on cooldown, but with the burning arrows, obviously, look how quickly it falls. There is a TP coming from Undying, who's gonna get hooks actually. Yeah. Uh, you talk about one of the better heroes to go up against people that are TPing into a tower. Obviously, Devo or Pudge is right up there with them. As far as his. Hey, shut up. I didn't say anything. Uh, as far as his potential, so showing it off right there. Great hook on the TPN and Dyer's easy kill as a result. And look at this smooth transition. Attack. Look at how fast he takes down that tower, man. Dyer's He's gonna be even quicker when he gets his Deso as well, but a thousand gold away from his Deso. That's when he can become quite scary, actually. Uh, although SF just picked up his Shadow, uh, Shadow Blades. Which is kind of an interesting item in itself. Obviously, we do see a lot of Shadow Blades on SF, so obviously, it's kind of a great kind of item with sort of uh, mobility. Obviously, you can settle with a nice threat of Clumber Souls, but with. We've already on your team, obviously. You can expect Complexity to have quite a few sentries. Obviously, they've got one up here. They've got a few down here as well. So the Shadow Blade is going to kind of be used, you know, kind of uh, less utility because of it, because there's already uh, an Invis hero on the side of Do What. But still, I think it's a, a decent choice. The obviously, the other uh, option is or Blink. It has its own benefits, but not as sort of late game potential as a, as a Shadow Blade. Obviously, doesn't get the attack speed and the damage. Yeah. Or Blink damage. Middle end. They wanted to set up for something there, but uh, not really getting the best angle. And obviously, Underlord continues to be the probably toughest target to kill. So, uh, not not the most prime spot, and they will just fall back from it instead. So yeah, the Shadow Blade on a Shadow Phoenix mentioned. It's going to be coming off good in a couple seconds right here. We'll see if he uh, looks to use it once again to scout things out. Speaking of that medallion, actually, Vengeful picking up one of his himself. Underlord's got one as well. Oh, yeah, okay. it's, yeah, Underlord's got one as well. I think it makes more sense for do what or the Underlord to pick up one here. There's a lot of sort of single target um, damage, particularly, you know, the Clink. So that medallion's going to be useful for whatever target um, Clink goes on here. And obviously helps with Roche. Talking of Roche, it looks like Clinks are going to go for it themselves. They've got medallion, as you mentioned, on the bench. But with the Wave of Terror and Clinks, this, uh, this Roche is going to fall. I'm going to trade it tier two. But there is actually a, a TP. All the TPs are going to do up actually, but I don't think they're going to make it in time. Oh, uh, that dark rift, but yeah. Yeah, do not get there in time. Cancel picks up the Aegis fight. Here we go. They want to fight. Pit him out some four different EOs. Mel's off the bat. Swaps in immediately. He's going to die pretty quickly. As the Tombstone also down, nobody's killing him. Pudge, he's going to end up dying. It seems like Complexity just had a loss as far as what's two right here. OD is going to fall. And they're probably going to pick him off a second time as well. So despite getting the Aegis, it's not going to work yet. He puts himself under as the Requiem goes off right as he reses right there. It's just delaying the inevitable, though. A four for nothing, including the Aegis kill. On top of that, yeah. Yeah, that was well played by Duop, though. Great catch by them. That Pit of Malice hit them all. Yeah, was, yeah that snaking was not only the Pit of Malice, but the instant Dark Rift actually onto that shrine. They realized that Roshan was being taken, and then obviously you said the Pit of Malice onto three. It was just far too much. Benji and Rubik died instantly, and then after your sports are dying, you know, they're going to fall down as well with the Undying Tombstone. It was just far too much, but really nice play, though, for Duop there. It's a massive advantage. If they lost Roshan there, they, they could have easily almost gone high ground. Complexity could have, but after that, Roshan, Duop are coming out ahead. Yeah, so at least Moose staying alive. Again, mentioned that's kind of the, the one positive Radiance for complexity, despite the way that fight played out. But Duop has to feel pretty good after what just happened right there. But you do have a Desolator now on Clinks, and it seems like TKB actually is going to be next in line. But yeah, level 15 as well, so he has 30 more Searing Arrow damage on top of the 10 Intelligence he got initially right there. And he actually, he might be going for some kind of open right here. OD charging in, pops the Dust, Mudo. Gonna take some pressure from Weaver, but cancel. He's trapped in that pit of malice. Finally gets away. He does not have an imprisonment. Gonna be hooked nice. back though. Good positioning right there. But they find Moo to the side. However, he ports out just in time. Uh, that was really close. Yeah, this sort of lack of lockdown again is kind of hurting Doo up there. But still, um, they're gonna be pressuring him. They still have DD on the Weaver actually. They might try and look to go to tier two, but no, they don't want to risk it. Pushing into a Pudge can be very, very dangerous. And Doo Wop are gonna realize that. And off, but, uh... Smoke up right after, almost like a complexity. Really wants to catch Duop off guard right here. Say, you know what? We're not done fighting just yet. We're gonna try to catch you before you can uh, even react. And uh, don't know if they're gonna get a Crystal Maiden here. Maybe. Oh wow, they're being pinked out now. So at least Moo was. They saw him there. Oh, the hook does land though, and yeah, that's an easy kill as a result. So. Yeah, it's going to probably transition into a, a tier 2 as well, actually, so a decent hook, although I'm dying his TP and over, but yeah, this tower is still going to go down with Deso and Clinks. So it's going to drop very, very quickly. We were still pushing in top, but don't think he's going to be able to trade in time. OT going to be getting a full-on Guardian creep. This just feels so odd to me. Peculiar. Yeah. 
it. As far as like, because, I mean, obviously Klinks can do plenty of damage, but with this build on OD, it just feels like it's, it's underwhelming as far as his damage output. He's more of a utility attack. here rather than that OD yeah. that's maybe somewhat scary with the right click. I guess complexity just kind of really valued the the early mech. Um, obviously, there's there's no one that can really else can farm it. I mean, like Venge mech perhaps, but it's it's far too poor to really sort of afford it. But as you said, obviously with with the OD going, you know, these kind of support items, it's not going to be able to do a lot of damage as a result. Uh, SF looking for this kill on Rubik, and he's going to find it, I think. Yeah, and Z freaks down. No chance right there for him to react. So good use of that Shadow Blade. Speaking of that, though, you know, Clinks keep talking about how, yeah, man, he's doing a lot of damage. He has a Dragon Lance now finished to even assist with that, get that extra range. But he hasn't been necessarily getting a lot of pickoffs. I mean, he is 4 0 yeah. 2, so he's obviously getting kills. And it's not like he's doing horrible, but um, it, I don't know. It, it, is, am, I, am I wrong yeah, to say no, that? No, no, no. I think you're definitely right. Um, but I think that at the same time, I do have been playing a kind of very. Um, kind of tight play, being sort of sticking together. I think they're only here, like I said, as I mentioned before, that I think Clink's probably kill is probably the CM and, and perhaps the Undyne as well. Um, but you see a lot of centuries and downers. I'm gonna find Venge here, but. As a swap, perhaps. it's obviously do you swap your teammate though? And, uh, unless they have some kind of quick escape themselves, that's pretty silly. So he's gonna be hooked back, TP out immediately, that's not gonna work, and Monkeys actually does make the escape. So a good attempt at least. But uh, Venge will really no chance from the beginning. Moo, he's hunting. Oh, Dark Rift, they're going to go somewhere. He's going to see this. Obviously, he doesn't really get too much out of it, but they're going to go to the bottom shrine area and make their way down here, trying to catch the OD, but he's already falling back. Meanwhile, Weaver barely squirms on by Clinks at the top lane, and he will also manage to get away. So farm will continue, but Duop really keeping this whole team fight presence together. They are, uh, yeah, definitely. Doing well at it. Like I said, like as you can see, like Duop, they're playing a, a lot together as a team, like as four. Perhaps only leaving the Weaver around to sort of push out lanes as he's doing top. And obviously, Klings can't kill the Weaver by himself because he's got that Lincolns and obviously heroes like Undying and Crystal Main. They're not going alone. So I mean, I, I can't really blame Moo. It is kind of a hard uh, game um, to play this Klings. Um, I was sort of more looking to try and this. group up, push out towers with his team, um, and go from there. But quite far away from BKB and that's an item that he really needs really because like, there's a lot of magic damage coming out from obviously the Maiden from the Undying uh, as well as the Underlord as well so that BKB is definitely um, going to be a massive power surge for, for the Clinks in the next uh, couple of minutes or so. God, look at Z Freak man, his farm, 7,000 net worth on Rubik right here. He has a Blink Dagger, the Helm of the Dominator and the Arcane Boot so He's uh, managed to have a very good time when it comes to his farm now. There was a Sentry War that spotted him with the Invis here, so that's why they're hunting. But uh, he actually is going to get to a spot where they cannot see him anymore, and Rubik will manage to live. But yeah, a little scary there for Z Freak. Yeah. I'm wondering when, like, Duo Pai is going to maybe perhaps uh, kind of invest into a gem. Um, perhaps Undying or Und Underlord could perhaps pick it up. Um, at the same time, it is a bit of a risk. Oh, hook just attack. off the mark there. So, yeah. But yeah, just going back to the meta, the gem obviously, if they, if they do, if they pick up gems to try and deal with the clings, then they end up losing it obviously. It's a Radiant's massive detriment middle to the Weaver and the Shadow of the in this, on their own team. But it could definitely be useful though, um, to stop top tower this clings from attack. possessing a lot of information and giving a lot of information to Complexity. Move the top lane, he's pinging it out right here as if they want to make a play perhaps, but yeah, it's so risky. Uh, you have Weaver with that Lincoln, so makes it even that much more difficult, so. Not going to happen. Rubik is sitting uh, nearby, but he has that blink dagger, of course. Help him get away if need be. And Moo instead is going to port to the bottom shrine, where he'll continue to get some more farm and trying to finish that BKB, as we're talking about, just so important for the hero to have this game. Vengeful pushing out the bottom lane. Meanwhile, Shadow Fiend's running in. He's going to chase after him. The Dark Rift coming to the bottom shrine as well. The hook on to Shadow Fiend is never coming out now. Getting to the support in time, though. He pops the BKB. 747 is going to fall. As move from the back line is going to take him out. In comes the swap onto Clinks right there, but he is chased down by Weaver. And it's three dead on the side of Complexity. Only two for Duop. So Duop, despite losing Shadow Fiend off the bat, they make it work as Weaver focus fired that Clinks that whole time. And even with the swap, it did not matter. So Duop comes out on top again. Yeah, Klinks is dying far too quickly in, in these team fights, honestly. I mean, it was it was all right. I guess it was two for two trade, or no, three for two trade. So again, do up on coming out ahead. But yeah, the Klinks is dying like too 
sort of little damage, particularly the fire stores. He's doing so much damage with the pit of malice, and he needs that BKB so badly for these team fights. Um, I mean, you can see how much damage he does. He like killed the Shadowfin very quickly, but kind of a very glass cannon build at the moment with the the orchid and the and the uh, desolator. Uh, still quite far away from his BKB as well. Yeah. He's top net worth though, so doing decent, but yeah, when he gets the BKB then it's going to be kind of a, a different story. Um, I do like, um, once quickly to mention that actually, ZP picked up the, the Helmer Dominator. I mean, we are seeing a lot more sort of supports pick up this item as well, but I think it's particularly useful this game because obviously Klinks can, can take advantage of it with the with the Death Pact. So the one the one issue uh, as Klinks as a hero is that obviously you always want to have Death Pact um, obviously used, but obviously there's not always a decent neutral creep nearby. But obviously with the Helmet Domino, um, it's sort of stuck to you, you can always use that. So. <laughs> use it as uh, food essentially to consume mm, exactly. if, uh, if necessary, so interesting uh, synergy there with the hero as interesting for complexity here as well. They're kind of spread out from one another, you need to be careful not to get committed to by just yet. Okay, they are going to collapse on each other as Monkey makes his way up here and so does Melons. And now they want to catch somebody with the hook, perhaps. But Monkey's running in, maybe trying to get the Underlord. There's a lift. Should be an easy catch, but here comes the response. Out comes the Tombstone. The heal on Underlord right there. It's going to be enough damage, so yes, it will be. Clings from the flank. Requiem of Souls from a distance right there, doing the slow at least. And Melon's feeling he gets a swap off onto the freezing field of Crystal Man, at least stopping it, but it does die shortly after the hook. Going to miss because Odie put himself under, and that might kill himself in the end. Yeah, Cancel's going to end up falling right there. If he actually got hooked, he probably lives on it. So he clinks me while taking that Weaver and he gets the kill on it, but now moves on the run. The BKB not up just yet. As we mentioned, Monkey's dismember onto Undying, but now he needs to run it out of there. That ain't going to work. And they will drop him. So yet again, Doo-Wop comes out on top in terms of numbers. Seemed like Complexity had hope, but three for two exchange. Yeah, um, I'm going to mention the same thing again as I mentioned the last one. It's actually the BKB on Klink that's really hurting him. This time, obviously, Klink didn't sort of die and didn't sort of get bursted down. But you, I don't know if you were seeing, but he was playing very, very defensive in that team fight there. Like when his teammates was getting hit, he was still playing very far back, wasn't attacking him. And it's because he doesn't want to be—he doesn't want to be dying in these team fights. And so as a result, because he doesn't have a BKB, he can't be dishing out damage because he has to play a lot more defensive in these team fights. And and it's hurting them a lot. Like as we mentioned, OD hasn't got—you know—he's got a mech. He's got this kind of support utility item. So the only Damage coming out from Flexi really is this Clinks, and, and if he's not attacking because he's sort of scared of, of dying because he's got his BKB, then they're going to lose that fight regardless if he, uh, if he has BKB or not. So I think it was a little bit too arguably too defensive and too passive play there. Yeah. Tombstone is down. Oh. Uh, hook onto and dying actually. That's going to be a free kill on him, but Roshan's still going to fall. And that's an A just picked up by the Shadow Fiend. So Complexity and Minor victory. Oh, the swap does hit Shadow Fiend actually. Do they have the follow up lockdown? No, they do not, is the answer. As he pops the Shadow Blade, he just kind of walks it off right there. So, that initiation, not necessarily the greatest. And now Vengeful Spirit, he's being locked up at the Pit of Malice. You see Weaver going to chase him down. A couple of auto attacks later, will end up dropping him. So now, Vengeful's dead for another 50 seconds about, with no buyback right here. So, yeah, minor victory leads into really not the greatest fight in the end for Complexity, despite the swap on the Shadow being even being used. But, uh, yeah, God, is it, this OD build, man, it really... It's just, it's almost unfortunate yeah, for complexity because you, you can understand the concept, I guess, but it seems yeah, like that they just need more damage. Yeah, and I, I think honestly, OD, like Grooves, the OD make isn't that bad as long as you have kind of a damage to sort of build it up. But at the moment, we talked yeah. about Clinks doesn't have his BKB, or he does just pick up right there as, as I say it. But like, obviously, he doesn't have sort of BKB, so he isn't able to do a lot of damage. And not only that, but you have your offlane as, as a Pudge, which is you know, predominantly really a, a support hero. Very single type base, and obviously, again, very you know, uh, volatile in terms of whether he lands those hooks or not, in terms of whether he gets the damage out or not, really. So, I don't know, I think I agree. This this Greaves pickup is, is peculiar, um, but particularly in this draft, and in, in terms of what heroes complexity have, it makes it even weirder because Odie needs to be dishing out damage, and unfortunately, he's just oh, not. Weaver just finished his own BKP as well. Could be some interesting interaction up here at the top lane, meanwhile, but Undying also nearby, so you gotta be a little bit careful. Weaver goes in though, there's coming a bot's action. He's trying to kill the creep in time, doesn't get the kill, and Monkeys ends up falling. You can see him using the dismember right there, just hoping for the best. It probably wouldn't have mattered anyways, whether he killed it or not, but uh, they get the kill on a monkey, so he's dead for 40, and that's gonna transition into a group up and push the top lane, so. But yeah, again, another case of uh, Moo up there, you know, running around for a while, acting like he's possibly gonna be trying to set up a kill, but Doo-Wop's just doing a great job of sticking together, having numbers nearby, Radiant's and not giving them any free opportunity. Attack. And now this top tower goes down, Radiant's Shadow Fiend Aegis still has that for a little bit, so they may try to uh, break the base right here even. 
I think they can. Obviously, with Desolator and Weaver as well as sort of the SF with Aegis, there's not much that complexity do. They need to kind of maybe perhaps get a hook into the tier fours is their only kind of best option. But BKB already using Clinton is dropping quickly. That's just to kill the Tombstone, by the way. <laughs> that was just to kill the Tombstone, which they did. But Dark Rift activated. It's going to be lifted up. Oh, that would have been big. Could have perhaps thrown him away, but not really going to happen. So. Uh, yeah. uh, it's arguably quite defensive there from Doo-Wop. I mean, BKB was used by Clinks. Yeah. And then there was still all the ulties up from Doo-Wop, but I guess and they're the going to play it safe. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah so, I mean, they, they, so they, they still had Aegis, that's what I mean. So I don't think they, would, they needed to really kind of play that defensive, but at the same time, the Aegis is, is still around for a couple of minutes. They're in they're no rush. They, they took the tower. But um, it does allow Complexity now to go for a smoke, which might catch Doo-Wop of God if they're not careful. Yeah, I'm with you. I feel like Diowop really almost missing an opportunity out there. Uh, but yeah, it's, as we see all the time, you know, it's better to just not dive too much and sacrifice and whatnot. Und undying. I said underload right there, but Undying does get hooked. And actually, Crystal Mana going to be put under as well. So, but for follow up, here comes that support. And by support, I mean the core. 747, the Requiem of Souls again from a distance. They'll move. Meanwhile, Pentagon auto attacks. But once again, get up to Skeleton Walk away, simply trying to live. Running away with his teammate, but Pudge so far the only one that's dead on the side of complexity. Move, he picks up the courier actually. Now he's going for the kill, but the glimmer cape popped right there, as well as a freeze in place on a clinch, and he can't even kill on dying. They are kiting him so well right now, and he finally pops the BKB. He does pick off the crystal maiden. Not going to be able to get much else. Meanwhile, he loses another teammate in a Rubik, and over here, OD going to have to put himself under once again, probably just delaying the inevitable of surviving right here. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So they do pick up Cancel, and the three kills happening in favor of Duwa. But again, the core staying alive, Shadow Fiend and Weaver. So at least Clink's able to pick off, you know, even one of the supports. I guess both of them even, but not really enough. No, definitely, definitely not enough. It was a nice idea. I think they needed to kind of make that play because you know, they're still fighting to Shadow Fiend Aegis. So if they perhaps was able to catch them by surprise, but obviously with the Undyne, the boss my back. Well, from OD. But here comes the uh, taxi ride home, boys. Uh, look, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would have been something. I think, uh, yeah, Fench Flat has. Did she even swap right there? Looks like she actually tried to swap something. Yeah, I think she did actually get the swap off, but it was still in the radius of the of the rift, so yeah. they was able to pull out. Yeah. Fortunate. Good Unfortunately, attempt. we haven't we haven't really seen the. I think like obviously, Doo-Wop first picked Underlord, and then Complexity went one two with the with the Pudge Rubik, and I think they wanted to pick the Pudge so they could kind of get the use out of the uh, kind of displacement or dis sort of um, positioning to make sure they catch someone out when the Dark Rift happens. But we haven't seen it once this game actually. I think this is. Um, Kind of costing them a little bit. Yeah, well, that's definitely a good argument to be made. Middle lane, though, this could be a big chance on a Weaver right here, but again, the Lincoln's causing issues. The Bloodthorn is ready to go on Clinks, but you see Weaver, he skitters on out of there. Oh, they're going to see him again, though, but without somebody taking off that Lincoln's, Moot can't really do anything about it, so really relying on the teammate support there. And unfortunately, it doesn't really uh, get much to assist with him at that point, at least. And instead, Weaver will make his way out of there, and now they're headed towards the bottom lane to try to push that out. So Complexity has some decisions to make here. Do they try to split push or defend, which obviously if their base is getting seized, they're probably going to have to fall back and defend right here. So Doo-Wop continuing to be in control. Hurricane Pike now onto Shadow Fiend, his own BKB, the Silver Edge, are his big items that he has. And eh, Chrysalis into a Daedalus works. The Bloodthorn, like, yeah. Clinks is <laughs> surprising how far he is actually, seeing as how these fights have been going, but... Oh, oh, just missing. Still doing some decent damage to him, but not going to be enough. Glimmer Cape comes out. He will survive. OD puts under on Shadow Fiend, I believe. Gets, uh, the imprisonment onto him, but a quick fall back. The hook, though, hits Weaver action. Not even intended. Just remember, it's going to be used right there. This might be a four staff away, but now Weaver, he doesn't really care. He has the time lapse. Going to go. Wrecking Missiles once again from a distance, but the aura effect is actually powerful in itself. The tower goes down. We see Viru here on that uh, dying, and guess what? The Uber out of here. Can they maybe yeah, change? <laughs> Again, they really tried that. They need this hook. They need this hook. Somebody. But um, unfortunately, Monkeys isn't in position to, to get it done. Like, if they hook someone there, like, that's an instant free kill. So obviously, do it. <laughs> the whole team is going to sort of like see yeah. you later, and one person's going to get pulled back by a hook. But a decent defense, though, from Complexity, though. They they didn't lose racks. Um, so it's definitely a decent hold. They obviously have lost their, their melee racks top, but um, still a decent hold. And. Uh, they should be pretty proud. These BKBs coming from, from SF and, and Weaver are getting very low, actually. Five seconds on an SF and for the Weaver, the BKB is 28 seconds. 
Look at that though. Ghost up here popped by Crystal Aiden. Now at least they had Pudge nearby to help secure the kill in the end. I was gonna say though, Ghost after a huge pickup against his Clinks as soon as he opens, he just popped that as we saw right there. All of a sudden Clinks can't really do anything about it and has to wait it out. So um, it and as we've seen in previous fights too, they're kiting him very well on top of that, even with the BKB. Seems like he's having trouble. Signs of life though, um, for complexity here. True. Which is good. Like, after that after that Rax lost top, I thought it was gonna be completely downhill, but they found some some fervor and some um, it, it does feel kind of weird, doesn't that uh Moo is ten one and four. I mean he is again the stat line suggests he's actually doing very well. But you know, that in the fights it just, just feels like it, it does feel a little yeah. underwhelming at the same. Now Weaver on the other side is twelve one and ten, so it's kind of what happens though. When you only have one kind of single damage Dyer's source, you, you're kind of forced to play defensive fight. because do what Breeder is that Clink is really Dyer's the only threat in the team fight. So if they can focus him, then it's fine, which forces Clink to play defensive. But oh, we go. Yeah, they're going to find Moo actually. That's a big target right off the bat. He's just simply in full survivor mode and it's not even going to work. He has a five back, but he's way far away. The Requiem of Soul Z Freak actually using it right there. Gets the kill on a Crystal Maiden, but they lose himself as well as that Clink's from before. And the rest are going to get away, and now they're going to taxi somewhere. Yeah, they're going all the way to the top lane, actually, oh, into the player. base of complexity. But you see, though, Clink dies, and the team over. It does have to force them to buy back, actually. They're going to try and do something. Buy back on Rubik as well. Yeah, Duwan might have overstepped their boundaries somewhat right here. Never mind. Again, the lack of lockdown, the damage doesn't really there, and they just all kind of run away. Who needs a dark, uh, dark rift when... They just run away as efficiently as they can. So, uh, Duop, you got to give them credit where credit's due for sure. They are playing a very smart, a very patient game of sorts, but it's definitely getting them the victory here right now, it feels like. Yeah, that's it, Roche as well. And they forced out the bomb after Clinks as well as I think the Rubik. So, one kill on Clinks, and that's going to be the game. And uh, Aegis now on, on strategy is making it easy, kind of just siege high ground, but it looks like they're going to. Complex are going to try and go outside of base. I don't know if this is the, the play, honestly. I think they should perhaps try and stay in base and try and look for the miracle hook um, from monkeys. But do what they're just going to go back, regen up, get their items, and then look to push down bot, seeing as all the racks top are completely uh, destroyed. Yeah, you got the cheese now on Weaver. I mentioned the Aegis on Shadow Fiend. The Butterfly is actually in the queue as well. So. Gonna push out this lane and we'll see if he gets enough to eventually farm it and pick it up here. But how about this Underlord too? The freaking Shiva, that Solar Crest finish, the pipe on top you, of that. <laughs> okay, there nobody's is. killing him. They they already lack a bit of damage, but yeah, do not focus Underlord. That's not happening. Uh, safe to say. But yeah, he, again, this is also just a pretty beefy team. I mean, even even a Weaver, obviously, with the time last makes it difficult. And the Lincolns, you got Shadow Fiend somewhat, uh, not really, though. In fact, he has 2,500 life. So the he has the most life in the game, I'm pretty sure, as I'm clicking around. So <laughs> not so much uh, squishy. And then there's a Ghost Scepter and Crystal Maiden, as we talked about before. So really, it's complexity's damage output. It's, it just seems like it's so mitigated, this game. And we're going to see minimal. right here. We need a, a decent hook here. It's the only way they, they can defend this high ground, I think. Here we go. He's out in the background. There's a swap in on a Weaver, actually. Weaver's going to die pretty quickly. He has no buyback. That's a chance for Complexity. They do lose Vengeful, but she did her job. Getting that big swap in. Z-Freak jumps in. He pops the ultimate, which is still from a dying. In comes the Sanity to the Eclipse as well. And 747 pops the Hurricane back over the Kill of Monkeys. Not going to be enough damage initially. 747 may end up falling, but again, he has the Aegis. Meanwhile, the Freezing Steel going off that whole time, doing plenty of damage. Triple kill, actually, for Shadow Feed as he will end up falling, but the Aegis bringing him right back up, of course. So uh, Clink's in the background, still good to go. At about half left, they need to be somewhat careful. They do put under onto Underlord right there, and they take out the Crystal Maiden, but as soon as he comes out, Shadow Fiend goes with him, and yeah, they got the racks on top of that. So as pretty as of an opening it's that nice. was for Complexity, it still yeah, doesn't matter. It was matter. actually a, kind of a, a nice team fight there from Complexity. It was kind of, um, it was not. It was kind of like a semi hook, but obviously they used the Venge instead um, to kind of hook onto the Weaver into straight dismember. So nice play, but in the end, Shadow Fiend was just destroying the racks in the meantime, and the Aegis was was too much, and again just too little damage. So I think the biggest reason though is that. Not only is Odie's items a little bit peculiar, but it's because they don't have the greatest ways to do, sort of deal with BKB. All they've got is clinks to deal with the BKBs. Um, obviously, complexity very kind of magical based. So when the BKBs come out from both from both SF and clinks, uh, so both, both SF and, and Weaver, um, it's only clinks doing the damage. And Shadow Fiend now with that butterfly. Seven four seven is BF. He is uh, ten four and twelve in this game. But again, Weaver. Do we have Bloodfall though? Here. 
There is uh, blood formation, which gets rid of the evasion from butterfly, but obviously, yeah. the, you know, BKB can be taken up, can be used to take off the blood form. So there's kind of counterplay, but they, they have ways. I mean, Aegis is still down, and I think what the complex needs to do then is somehow kind of bait out the BKB from, from uh, Shadowfin, and then they can use the blood form to sort of take off the evasion, and then they can kill Shadowfin quite quickly, actually, with the clinks. Let's see. That's. I don't know about that. <laughs> We've been kind of talking yeah. about the lack of overall damage, man, and it's, uh, it seems like, like, it's like what, what about, like, whoever clinks attacks does quite a lot of damage, but then you've got to sure. worry about the other four, four heroes that clinks isn't attacking is the problem. Yeah. Oh, jeez, my game is spiking again with the FPS. I apologize, guys. Let me uh, see if I can get it fixed real quickly here. Like it just uh, takes a little bit, and then it finally gets better. Okay, there we go. I may it restart after this, guys, and uh, just go to a different setup. Anyways, okay, we should be good. Back good to go. Uh, but yeah, so not missing anything right there. It's just do while making the way over towards looking to get some kind of push. But uh, gonna go for the other shrine. He's gonna take that out pretty quickly. Are you still there, Mini? Yeah, I'll see. Okay, for some reason, I, I was just making sure that some more issues didn't come up. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Hurricane Pike on a clink, so there, there's even a little more damage. So a nice utility there that he can uh, take advantage of as well. But He's making his way towards MKB, which is obviously the, the lot more reliable way to do with the butterfly um, than just the blood form. Obviously, he goes through BKB, obviously, so with the MKB, um, proc chance. But there's Cheese now and Weaver as well. I mean. Complex, they've got to try and do something crazy, and maybe this smoke is, is their way to do it. Weaver and Maiden aren't nearby, but they are tipping in, so. Complex, I'm going to back off. They're yeah, not going to work. Flink's just pushing out the top lane the best that he can. It's a dark back to even him that damage quite a bit, but. Looking for a catch as doo -wop. 747 again on that Shadow Fiend. Just using one of the front lines, just cleaning out the Ancients. I don't know if they're necessarily waiting for an item here or not. I mean, Daedalus being worked on by Shadow Fiend, so I guess that could be it. Maybe they want to maybe at least get the Chrysalis to the Daedalus here. We're really trying to siege and finish off this game, but Complexity is, again, doing what they can to just delay it as long as possible and get some kind of opening. Ideally, maybe get a pick off or two. And on the cores, when they don't have a buyback, just things kind of lining up and then counter siege. But... So it's understandable that they are not throwing in the towel just yet, but most certainly a game that's uh, going to be a very, very difficult task. This is not going to help things. Odie gets caught initially. The auto attacks from Shadowfin. He's chasing him down. Pops the BKB. Blade Mill going to be used, though. Switches targets. Mellows, meanwhile, the focus fire now. Buyback on Unloaded. He did die right off the bat right there. Move from a distance with that straight. But again, he is keeping that distance. Takes out the centaur that was on top of him. Weaver dies on an OD. Odie will barely survive, though. And the hook, meanwhile, to Undying into the well right here, but not close enough. And he's just going to walk it off. He finally will get picked off. But over here, you see Klinks again running back. They destroy the racks. And that is going to spawn Mega Creeps now. And that should all but do it in favor of doo here. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, those as we see OD about to get dropped. Nope. That's the vibe, but oh man, no, he's dead. No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he's dead. No, <laughs> <laughs> what's gonna happen here? He's gonna man. Those grease, man. No, he's not survive. Yeah, he's too strong. But no, I think, I think, I think, honestly, the the drop was kind of countered quite well by Duop. It all goes back to obviously them blocking a lot of the the ancients and the full camp and. So when you're playing sort of Pudge sort of in, a, in a core role, particularly in the offlane role, if you aren't able to sort of get those kind of gimmicky pulls off with the hook, then the hero lost, you know, loses a lot of his kind of appeal and a lot of his value. And then obviously it kind of sort of comes down to the OD kind of these sort of peculiar items, which I can understand obviously the mech useful for sort of team fights, but it definitely does you know, lack in a lot of damage. And then, then they're relying too much on a clinks, which I mean, a single core clinks as a carry is never going to be income out of so out carry like a hero like Weaver as well as a SF on top of that. So uh, a bit of a, a strange draft from Lex. I can definitely under, understand the idea. Uh, unfortunately, this game this was definitely dealt with by Doop, and game two is going to see something different most likely. But this will so come in handy. Holding on. Yeah, I, I, I don't honestly know why it's, it's really just feels like they're banging their head against one. I mean, again, I, I don't know if they really feel like that they're so far. 
I mean, to be fair, considering how this game's been going, like when it, the net worth, 15,000, yeah, but considering they have mega creeps now and stuff, it's actually not a whole lot, and it's only 31 to 27 hero kill, so, you know, for their, their mind, they may think like this is a lot closer of a game, but it... Yeah, I mean, it, like, in terms of money and economy, it kind of has been a very close game, but the, the difference is, is in these team fights, like we talked about, like, the, the, the team composition is completely different. They have a punch that does very little, really. The only kind of benefit each one are offering to a team fight is maybe perhaps hook into base, but you compare that with someone like an Underlord. Look at the Underlord right now, like he's got he's got mech, he's got pipe, he's got sheep, he's even got something like there's so much more the utility from this yeah. Underlord compared to the offlane pudge is, is night and day again honestly. And um, again I can understand Monkeys likes playing this hero but I just I don't think Pudge as a core it doesn't work. We've we've seen it time and time time again not work before and again we're not seeing it here either unless Unless Monkeys goes on some crazy killing spree from you know the get-go, from the later phase to, to the mid-game. So I think Pudge as a, as a core uh, can work. Now they're gonna see. give it a shot. MKB in the works for Kalink, so get that maybe and just go for quick kills. Unfortunately, he's gonna be jumped though. And I don't know if he's getting away from this one. Okay, four staff away initially. Maybe he is, so he is good. Crystal Maiden was running in. Look at that death pack though. Death pack med creeps, man. Kalink's gonna hit so hard. Oh, though. true, yeah. <laughs> There you go, that's so, so, they're, they're running into the that's trap is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly, that's so this is all part of the plan. Exactly what Let's they want. That Clink is going to be doing sick damage. 25, yeah, 125 attack damage now on top of that. Clink needs to get brave go actually, if they get them, give you another thing. That's what I was thinking, yeah, that's what I was kind of hoping that he'd be going for, but he has the MKB clicked up, of course, so. I mean, obviously, it's good against SF. Obviously, he can get rid of his butterfly evasion, but he has blood forms to do with that, um, which is somewhat reliable, obviously, depending on whether SF uses BKB to pop it off. But he needs just raw damage, and I think Rapier will be the, the way forward. But we'll see. He can buy MKB now, but deciding against it, so he yeah. might be Rapier. Maybe. Yeah, no, th th if there's a Rapier game, this is definitely, uh, this is definitely it, it for complexity, so. Kind of hope that it, it is, and uh, yeah, even with that, it's, you still got a 100% of damage. Uh, he does go the MKB, but I mean, obviously, I mean, it's, that's it's still, still good, good damage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately, it's, um, it's not. Not the divine. Oh. I think if Weaver had Butterfly as well, this definitely would have been the pickup, but I think with just the SF, perhaps, it would have been better, but. Back as they're trying to jump him, and Weaver's tired of waiting. Wow. Okay. Take his boys. Melted. There he goes to the oh, nice. hook gets as well, and yeah, now boys, Weaver's gonna die. That's a buyback. That's the thing they look at. Look at that. He just jumps in and pops the tart. What's going on? You all over, over here actually. OD dealing with the Shadow Fiend. Freezing Phil gonna be going off for Crystal Maiden, but she does die shortly after, so. We got further Weaver staying dead. All and right, boys, let's go. They we hold. Got a game on our hands. I mean, obviously, it all goes back to Weaver's. Obviously, got a very aggressive play, very uh, a nonchalant attitude towards this game. I mean, the prone's still up, boys, so it's still playing, but it's still some of a hold from Flexi. Um, if they can perhaps contest the next Roshan, it'd be pretty big. Everyone's tr kind of frantically trying to build Maelstrom now <laughs> on the side of Flexi. Yeah. Playing against Mega Troops. That's a pretty good item to have, obviously in this case. As uh, Rubik's does or Rubik does have an Ags. But the recently he has a he stole a freezing field as well. Yes. So his ability to be even a little more useful there, but Underlord continuing this theme of being just a great tank support and he now picks up a Lotus Orb on dying, actually picked one of his own up, so we have a couple Lotus Orbs now. Crucial for the bird and whatnot. Actually, Shadow Fiend though, he's being chased down. Shiva's, it does connect. Gonna be put under with the imprisonment. They have that damage though, they do not. Klinks is not here, and again, without Klinks, they really can't expect to kill anyone. Especially that Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend's gonna run back in, gets a couple auto attacks onto the Vengeful, and that's a dead Vengeful. 70 seconds, no buyback. On an ult right there. And now Dewa pushing in. So they're going to be down one. And really any hero is, is pretty crucial at a time like this. So boys, they need, a, they need some sick hook into Fountain onto like the SF or the Weaver. That's what we're banking on. Oh, here we go. Well, that's not the hook they're looking for. Swing and a miss as Blade Mail can be popped by OD. Gets caught there initially. The four staff though. He'll 
at least survive for now. Oh, that hook almost got Weaver. Tapped him a little bit, but just out of range. But Shadow beat under, but really this is a distraction right here. Freezing feel by Rubik right there as he jumps in. Streak just going pretty crazy. Trying something, but again, it's just, it's just not going to happen. Boo is doing everything he can to live. But when you're not, when you're just trying to live the whole time, you ain't doing a whole lot of damage. So. That should all but do it here. It's the final push coming out from Duop as they're letting the Kreeus really do most of the work. And they're kind of just staying alive themselves. So, game one, we'll go to Duop here over complexity. And gotta say, very deserving. I mean, I know it's ended up being a 52 minute game, but they really were in control of most, if not all, this game here. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think they played pretty good. Like the, the draft was solid. They knew exactly how to execute and what to do. I think, honestly, complexity. I think this game they were kind of a little bit too focused on sort of trying to deal and and kind of counter the enemy lineup from the side of Duop instead of kind of playing a, a decent strategy and kind of executing it as much as possible. But I think we'll definitely see something different from from complexity in game two because um, I think they'll be quite disappointed with that with that performance, honestly. And I think it goes arguably goes back to the draft. Um, something that. Um, we'll perhaps see something different in uh, game two. But we'll see. GG will play we will to uh, see. do whoop. Well, guys, uh, like I said, uh, also I want to wrap up here real quickly because I'm actually going to restart the stream. I'm going to go back to my, my typical setup. I've been using a different setup for the sake of the production and everything to get those fancy graphics and stats and everything, but it's obviously causing too many issues. So I'm just going to go back to my normal setup and cross the fingers. Hopefully everything will be fine with that. So sit tight, guys. We'll be right back. The Star Letter I League Star Series American Qualifiers continues. I'm Frankie CPK, joined by Mini. we got game two coming up next. Stay tuned, guys.